Hey everybody, welcome back to the ECG channel with Reed. My name is Reed and today we're going to go over accelerated idioventricular rhythms. This is going to be kind of the next video in line with our ventricular escape rhythm. So this is going to be quite similar to that. And so I would say go watch that video first, make sure you understand that. Um, and now we'll be able to build upon that to talk about accelerated idioventricular rhythms. And so AIVR for short, is a rhythm that occurs and it's as its name implies it is coming from the ventricles we said in our previous video that ventricular rhythms typically occur we would say ventricular escape rhythms they usually occur somewhere 20 to 40 beats per minute so that's what we said a usual ventricular escape rhythm would do. But in this case, as its name also implies, that this is an accelerated rhythm. So this is essentially going to be a ventricular escape rhythm. But instead of being 20 to 40 beats per minute, it's going to be maybe 40 to 100 beats per minute. And otherwise, all the same concepts of our ventricular escape rhythms are going to generally apply. There is a focus in the ventricles, maybe say, if I zoom in, somewhere here, deeper in this Purkinje system, and it's going to fire off to depolarize the ventricles. And as it depolarizes the ventricles, it's going to not take the his Purkinje system. And so we can say that these are going to have a wide QRS. Notice the cause of depolarization was this focus within the ventricles. And so we're not getting normal conduction from our SA node down to the AV node, down to the ventricles. That's not happening. And so we're not going to see no P waves are going to be driving the QRS. That doesn't mean we're not going to see P waves, but the P waves are not going to be associated with our QRS. So you might be able to call this some type of AV dissociation, meaning that the ventricular rhythm is not, is, is not associated, it's dissociated from the atria rhythm. And then we said it's going to be accelerated. So really we're going to have wide complex QRSs that are not preceded by a P wave. And it's going to be at a, at a rate of 40 to 100 beats per minute. Now, why would this occur? Why would this focus here fire off? Well, somebody could just have an ectopic focus. So maybe they just have, somebody has an excited ectopic focus that just decided to fire off and maybe we need to ablate it. Two, if the sinus rhythm, if it decreases in its rate, to the point where, you know, say the sinus node, you have sinus bradycardia at 40 beats per minute. Well, if that's the case, then maybe this ectopic focus in the ventricle here, it is not being suppressed by normal ventricular depolarization, right? Because if you have a focus here and your sinus node is beating, the sinus node is going to cause atrial depolarization. AV node is going to send it down into the ventricles. And it's going to be typically suppressed. So these ectopic focuses are going to be suppressed until maybe that sinus rate decreases to the point where, oh, it's going to fire off. So oftentimes we will see intermittent AIVR with decreased sinus rates. We'll actually see an example of that here in a second when we look at it. So AIVR really is a, generally a pretty benign finding. Um, and oftentimes you have to really get lucky to see it. It might happen in four to five uh, kind of beat um, sequences here. So let's take a look at what AIVR might look like on a rhythm strip. And so here's our rhythm strip. What you've noticed here is our first beat over here on the left. This is looking at lead two. If we look at our first beat. We've got this nice narrow QRS. We've got our P wave in front of it. And then we've got our nice T wave. 
And so this is a sinus normally conducted beat. And if you notice what happens is the next beat that occurs is wide. And then we have another wide complex beat. And if we look at this first beat, I look in front, so I see first of all it's wide. It's greater than 120 milliseconds in duration, so it's a wide QRS. I look in front to say, is there a P wave? And I see no P's. And then what we see is we see it's essentially, this looks like a PVC. It's very similar to a premature ventricular contraction. But instead of being one, we see it goes, happens again, happens again, happens fourth time. I don't see any atrial activity throughout. So something is going on with our sinus node. Maybe we have a sinus pause for a split second. And then all of a sudden, we see our P wave come back and generate a normal QRS. Our P waves generate a normal QRS. And then look what happens again. We get the resumption of this accelerated idioventricular rhythm. You can actually notice that the sinus P wave is trying to peak out, but it occurs at the exact same time just about as the QRS. And so this P wave, P wave is not conducted, in this case, to the ventricles, because the ventricles are in the process of firing off. And so likely what's happening here is we have a young, healthy individual that is exhibiting a sinus arrhythmia and so anytime their sinus node slows down, right here, so say right here, the sinus node is slowing. The sinus node is slowing. And so this accelerated idioventricular rhythm starts to beat. And then when the sinus node picks back up, and so when the sinus node goes faster, it takes over the rhythm and it captures the ventricles itself with these nice narrow QRSs. And so why do we not see P waves if that's the case? Well, likely what's going on, and this doesn't happen for everybody, is you might, this person might be having some retrograde atrial depolarization that's just buried within our rhythm. And so maybe we're not seeing it, or maybe this is a sinus pause. It's hard to tell based on this strip, but I would say because of this beat right here, where we see a P wave, we just see it's prolonged from our previous P wave. This is likely just due to sinus arrhythmia. And if you don't know what sinus arrhythmia is, you can go check out that video. It's essentially fluctuations in the sinus rate due to change in autonomics with inspiration and expiration. And so I hope this helps you kind of understand the spectrum of ventricular rhythms. In our previous video, we talked about ventricular escape beats, which are when ventricular focus will fire off at the typical rate of 200 or 20 to 40 beats per minute. But in this case, an accelerated idioventricular rhythm or AIVR, this occurs when a ventricular focus fires off at a rate of 40 to 100. It can occur in individuals like this who might have a sinus arrhythmia. It could also occur in somebody who has a sinus pause for a few seconds and this focus takes over and so um, ultimately, this typically has a decent prognosis. So I um, hope this helps and have a great day.